Welcome, Chidambaram, to my MFI. <laughs> we have. Uh, <laughs> we had a proper screening yesterday. All the students went to um, you know Satyam Theater and oh, okay. saw it. And um, so whether they had already seen it or not, there was an official screening, and the screaming and all the enjoyment. So welcome. You know. What, what really makes us um, want to talk to you about this is because I think, you know, there is always a, 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 in a decade you get a film which is a breakthrough film. And what we have always felt is that when we've seen films which are huge commercial hits, we always feel that there is some, you know, compromise, there is some additional fat, something added. But when we saw Manjumal Boys, there was absolute, complete brevity and uh, very compact storytelling, you know. How do you pick on this idea after doing a film like Janeman? What's your source? <clears throat> so, Sean, my friend and one of the properties of Janeman, hmm. so he knows his voice personally. So, hmm. soon after, like while we were, soon after Janeman's release, we were wondering what to do next and I was, people were like, ask me to do an even bigger comedy film and stuff like that. So, so I, I happened to hear the story, so I like, like take the car, let's go meet them. So I went to the, uh, went to Kutan's house. Oh. Uh, see Joe David. So I went to his house and like, and he has gathered like almost all the boys there. Mm. Some of them like went on. And I saw Subhash, I met Subhash there. Oh. So I didn't know who was who. So I just mm. like shook his hand and the friend said, even I had a poet or that. <laughs> that really strike. Okay, mm. okay. Then we sat and they narrated the whole incident and it really like I didn't know like I just knew that like some boys like went to uh, Kodaikanal and had some issue and they came back. Then I heard the Guna element, uh, the Devil's Kitchen backstory, and really said that Subhash is the only guy to come out of there alive. And so that uh, that time I knew there is a cinema in it and people should know about this story. So that is how I arrived. To, uh, so when when you're looking at the story and you heard it, I mean, did you have any particular idea that after comedy I'm going to do a survival drama? Did you see it as a story first or no, what? I, so it was like a movie. Uh, like I didn't think of genres. Like I didn't think of it as a survival. I just as a story. Like I didn't. Uh, for me, I, uh, the shift was not like uh, I think comedy was a much harder genre for me. <laughs> like this is much more me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a shift was not a problem for me. There are a lot of areas in the film uh, which sort of goes back. There are three cutbacks to the childhood, mm. uh, to the um, uh, you know hide and seek, to the water swimming. You yourself, as a child, you grew up on a film. You, you went to film sets often. Yeah. So what was your experience of working as a child actor? <laughs> like you're the Malayalam version of Kamala Hassan. <laughs> <laughs> Working as a child actor, I like I didn't like the process to be honest. That's why I like to, didn't act anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a it opened up a lot of windows and like and I uh, from an earlier stage itself I understood how this thing works and how a shoot is like and, and even my father is also an associate director. So I know so it was uh, I don't know, it was not too alien, not a very alien space for me. I, I, it felt like I belonged there, like, so yeah. Sure. Did, did your father's dreams some way get imprinted in you? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been channeled. Hmm. And uh, he's very happy that I got, like, he wanted to be a director. He was, he's a director, but what, and he is telling me what all he couldn't do that I'm doing and it's making me very happy. And <laughs> Amazing. It's good to hear that. You know, a lot of people in the film industry, you know, they say Nepo kids and stuff like that. But in reality, you know, a uh, lot of people actually more than uh, nepotism is actually the desire to win and succeed mm -hmm. in a field. You know, you kind of inherit it and then you are, you know how difficult it is to do it. Yeah. A.R. Rahman's father was, made, came and struggled in Malayalam yeah. and, you know, you see him, him su successful. But Rahman's father couldn't see it, so the father must be delighted seeing yeah, your... If you're a nepo kid, you, you will only get one shot. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to kick him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
No, no, but what I am saying is that it's it's the desire to succeed. A lot of trade is like passed down in families. Like if mm. your fa father is a Kathakali artist, you mm. get access to Kathakali like very early age. Yeah. So that access is not your uh, like you can nobody can blame on you like blame <laughs> you like because you have an early correct, access correct, to correct, that. Correct. But still, you have to nurture it. You have to practice. Yeah. As I said, you only get one shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, when you pick the story. You had a producer on board, or like how how yeah, did that I, happen? Actually, I didn't ha have to like go around finding producers because Southern decided to like make a movie, and we were like both together in the process. Like so even before meeting them, Southern meeting them, Southern said, "Okay, I will produce you direct." Uh, so Parva Pictures wanted to like make their first film. So uh, I fortunately I ha I didn't have to like do a lot of uh, convincing and. Saudi is equally crazy, right? Like so, he jumped in. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, when you got this thing and you have these ten odd characters in it, so what was the obvious casting decisions you were doing? Uh, casting, uh, I I was very particular that the, the the chemistry between the real boys should be reflected on the screen without forcing it. Mm -hmm. So I selected another bunch of. <laughs> My mm. boys mm. from my circle, and of course, acting is the first priority. Mm. Uh, but there were a lot of combinations, and finally, and it was not like I didn't go. This was not the initial cast list. Mm. It changed every week, so I have this cast list board. So it changes every week. They will come and say, "My photo is still there." <laughs> <laughs> and who came? And like, so it was not easy. And it was and uh, we more than shooting. We spent a lot of time together. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, and so I think that way you translated on the screen. I didn't have to force their friendship, so it, it naturally came. And like, I don't think we can like artificially get it. So it was there. So I just put cameras around them. Because you eventually, uh, when you were going to make the film, you were in discussion with Shaiju Khaled then yeah. uh, and the art person. So did you know by then what would be the budget of the film? What was the initial budget for the film? And uh, we thought we could like. Finish it by around 13. Yeah. But I knew it won't stop at 13. <laughs> but the producer like to say that 13. But you know, that's not the reality. You can't like well, budget on paper is not reality. You have to yeah. really. So I I I knew it will come around 19, 18. But it, it, I think it we finished around 20. I think. That's brilliant. Because a lot of unforeseen things happen. Like, because we are doing it for the first time. The workflow we had to like find. Yeah. So when when it came down to shooting. How many days did you shoot? We shot for 100 plus days, 110 something days. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, 30 days in Kodai and 20, 25 days in Cochin and 30 days inside the set. Okay. And when you were inside the set and you had to build, how long did it take for you to build the set? And it took uh, four months uh, for us to like find a place and like, because it is not a conventional studio floor. So we had to start from scratch. Hmm. We had to do the flooring, we had to do air conditioning, we had to build toilets, build lounges for actors, make a room, costume, edit room and so it was like basically setting up a whole new thing like it's a small film city uh, like in the outskirts of Kuchin. Like so it's a, that was the difficult part. And we took it to four months. But I think it's still it's a fast process considering yeah. the scale of the it's yeah. quite quite a big. Uh, yeah, and uh, I was I uh, I went to the uh, uh, set like when they started like excavating and like start, like before like they started doing anything. Then I went to shoot. Then one month after one month I go back to set and and I go inside the set. I was like twenty years old, but I didn't expect this. No. I was like okay, but just like that, like but the CG part of it. Then I went inside and I was like, oh. yeah. Because it, because it's, it's totally a giant Charlie series. And so when you actually went into uh, shoot, mm -hmm. uh, when you went for a recce, how when did you first get into Devil's Kitchen and actually go so, down? Uh, that was uh, one of the best moments in my life, I should say. Like I, I will always remember it. So uh, we went in the first time. We didn't have permission. Hmm. Uh, I don't think there are no forest officials. <laughs> 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 so we didn't have permission. So we had to systematically bribe <laughs> the forest guard there. Mm. So he asked us to come at five uh, in the morning. Mm. So that in Kodai, you know, five it's mm. very cold. So five of us, like we had to park our car like uh, five six kilometers away. We had to hike through the pine forest. Mm. 
like proper thieves, <laughs> mm. <laughs> then we reach the guna and uh, we reach the main area of the guna okay, where the tourist has access. Mm. So this guard was waiting for us there. Then we gave him the money. Then he, we jumped the fence and before me getting in, he gave me a, a lemon and mm. a, what do you say, the iron stuff. So this is because the negative energy is there. So that's why we built up the guna. And I was like, oh, and, I, and we have heard a lot of stories like, mm. and we are also going to make a story. Mm. About it, and uh, that go, get, I was. We were all very scared because not because of the uh, ghost or anything, but mm. we're genuinely scared for our lives because there are a lot of holes waiting for you, like here, and that it's very well hidden. Mm. And even though this hole, like that, that he falls, it's very well. It's in the shape. Mm. First time I went and I just I stepped on that mm. because it is on the natural path, mm. and and that's what because the other other one of the and we can't find because the grill they put no. Mm. In the end of the film, mm. after 15 years of uh, sedimentation and like all this, broken. and it is not working. You can't see it. We don't know where the hole is. It's somewhere here mm. because it's well hidden and it's it's like that. And so I saw the match coming out. I got the skull the first time. I got the monkey skull when mm. when I got inside for the first time. And that place really smells of death, and mm. uh, that smell was the only thing that was missing in the film. It, uh, and uh, it, it has a big effect on and it humbles you and it's huge and it's prehistoric it's very older than how was english and mm. so uh, it's it, it was a very special moment so uh, wh when did you um, see the original uh, guna as the film how old were you what, what impact did that thing do no uh, uh, as a kid I, I don't remember if like if i had seen guna in like tv but I, the song was always there hmm. and i saw guna like for this movie like uh, uh, as a part of research hmm. but i didn't watch it fully but I, because i was keeping skipping i only wanted to see the guna ke but because i don't want to, too much influence from that film also. Hmm. so i kept a safe distance from that film <laughs> So it's it's pretty amazing because you have a survival drama, you creating the entire visual based on one visit of Ajay and Chalishir. He's keeping it in his mind. He's rebuilding it, and then you have got a memory of a person who's actually fallen in. So you're reconstructing that visual from your memory, and your audio you're recreating from people's memory of that yes, thing. Yes, yes. So what do you play? Is the role of memory in this film? Role of mem memory can be very deceiving at times. Yeah. So what I did, no, I uh, I interviewed each of them separately. Mm. So I don't want like there any crossovers. Right? Yeah. So all of their accords are like slightly different mm. because it's been 15 years, yeah. and you will be like you tell a lie for a long time, and it, <laughs> then you think it's the reality. Mm. So that happens to everyone. So I interviewed them separately. Then I interviewed the driver, then who gave a totally different perspective. He's an outsider. Mm. And he was guess like this guy is like you like they, <laughs> they were asking for it and mm. because uh, they are like re reckless people and uh, and and yeah uh, so I interviewed them separately then I cut it together to get the narrative mm. so I stitched the narrative with their words mm. so my script is actually a for a, a, a long interview wow so I, from that I like started writing and put poems and and the stone falling and all. It really happened. Hmm. So when I told the sound, you know, this is like uh, the, the sound guy really like it locked on that point because it's a hmm. pure atmosphere thing too. Like hmm. so, a lot of, you don't get to do that in a lot of movies. Hmm. So yeah, so every department had a thing to and uh, and the soundscape, yeah. Uh, so I actually we went to went inside Guna Kesh around seven six times after that. Hmm. So we went inside. We took measurements. We did uh, lidar scanning. Mm. And oh. we took molds from the same rocks. Wow! Uh, okay, so it looks like. We uh, took my VFX supervisor inside. We took, in, we took even put sushi shell inside. Wow! We to feel the sound. Wow! Oh. To smell it. This is huh. Guna, and now you can go and do the score. Okay. So yeah, and we had, we took the carpenter, we took the detailer. So it was like seven times we went in, seven times like different different department. I was very keen. Everyone should know that. And every time me and Shaiju come. <laughs> so we went inside different seasons, different times of the day. Mm. So uh, uh, sometimes it's very dry, it's very pleasant, the sun is hitting, and sometimes even if it's raining, it's a totally different. So the <coughs> Buddha has different moods, the, the cave. Mm. So that's why I use the different climates and the, like, the rain after that, so the, it's the change of the moon. Yeah. It's a very immersive experience. Yeah. Uh, so when, when, when you were doing the prep, 
inside this, you have a major soundtrack as an idea. Mm -hmm. Did you have this soundtrack idea in your film uh, while you were right? Yeah. No, like, uh, so when I heard the story, I asked the production to go buy the rights. Because mm -hmm. if, if I, we don't get the song, we can't do this film. Yeah. So I, I was very keen on like opening the movie with that song and ending it. So we, I had that idea. <coughs> and I will play the song when Narendra is coming out of the hole and, you, and I play the song. And it worked. Hmm. And I test it with a lot of people. Whoever comes to me, listen to this. <laughs> I tell them the climax and they play the song. And it all worked. So that's why I, I, uh, it, was, it was a decision from the scripting. Uh, How difficult was it for you to get the audio right for that? Uh, I think like my production dealt with it. I think it was easy, uh, not very difficult as we imagined. Hmm. But now it is very difficult because I need to buy it once more for uh, Hindi. Oh. Now the prices have gone up. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, what, 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 I mean, did you at that time ever get in touch with Kamal while you were making the film or was there any of this? No, 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 no. we yeah. didn't try to connect with him because we didn't know, like, uh, he would work, like, we don't know Kamal sir, we only know Kamal sir, like, we haven't seen pictures, we, we mm -hmm. don't know him as a person. So, I like, no, let's not distance, let's finish it, at least, like, uh, show him the trailer after we do it. And actually, we came here to record his voice, like, or uh, uh, during we were me and Sushin. But unfortunately, we couldn't meet him that day. Mm. I think that was for good. <laughs> mm. Finally, we got to show him the film and the rest he yeah. invited all of us here. So. Yeah, we, we, we didn't try to contact him. So, in, in, in your sound design, who did your sound design? My sound design is by Shijin Hutton. Mm. He, uh, he has done a lot. He did Haider, mm. Jaga Jasus, and mm. uh, he did, uh, the latest one was Scam. Mm. So he's also from Kerala, he's from Kannur, and he's also uh, uh, Sushin's uh, schoolmate. Oh. So the sound department's all Kannur squad. Oh, the <laughs> whole Kannur squad. And my mixing engineer is Fasal. He oh. uh, did mixing for Churli, no. uh, Valiban, and all of them. And it was all done in Kerala? It was all done in Kerala. The mixing was done at his ho uh, home studio. Amazing. We only took it for mastering uh, to the to outside. Fantastic. So, what was... Uh, the big contributions to your film, like, you know, you have an incredibly, what can I say, uh, energetic opening where mm -hmm. you see these mad boys yeah. as losers. Yes, exactly. So, the role that the song played mm -hmm. inside this, mm -hmm. that's Sushin's great mm -hmm. piece inside yeah. this, because this, the ray later on, Kanmani comes in, overtakes the yeah, yeah. <laughs> entire score. What was Sushin's take on the music and what did he have? Any ideas? So the first soundtrack, uh, we brought in Vedan. And ah. I, I, it's, a, it's a story about proletariats. Like they are yeah. all like working class men. So I, mm. I want someone to write from their side. And mm. so that's why I brought in Vedan. And he writes beautifully. So yeah. other than like with, and I got only one song played with his 11 faces. Mm. So the so uh, the song should have who they are, where they come from, and what they do. Mm. That was my instruction to Vedan. And they are all, uh, what do you say, laborers, yeah. working class men. So that was the, and I only got, if I go to introduce each of them, it will be interval by the, by the time I finish. Yeah. So one song I got, and, uh, and I have to like show them as losers. And the mm. guys who are winning are the real men boys. Wow. Who are on the opposite side of them, and they are placed all in almost the same order actually. Mm -hmm. So I want them, I wanted them to win, and and I want the, their face in this movie because it's their story. There's a lot of underlying political things that you have, and you have also um, stories of religion <coughs> yeah. because you have you start <coughs> off in Parani, somebody shaving his head, mm -hmm. he looks at it, he sees a newspaper article, mm -hmm. and then he goes to the church father mm -hmm. and says. And then this, the, the, it's like a, what can I say, it's like a thriller opening. You don't realize why that is happening. Yeah. Did, did you have that structure in your writing or did that come in the edit? No, no, we had that in the writing. Uh, we had it in writing. I wanted to open in Palani. Hmm. Uh, I wanted to open with the song. Hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so the underlying thing is like, why the Murugan element is because uh, Murugan is the Kuruni Andav. So mm. it is Kuruni is Kodi. Mm. And also he is the Guru Guha. Yeah. He is oh, the oh, master oh. of the caves. Yeah. So I think he should, yeah, of course he should be in the film. That's a, <coughs> that's a very nice mythical overtone that you yeah. have, have in the film. So you, 
the while shooting, I mean, you have this, I think one of the most interesting pieces of cinematography in recent times, Shaiju Khalid has yeah. really done an extraordinary work. What, what, how, how long was the prep? What was his contribution? And what do you think makes this, this work on his like so significant? So I was very keen on getting Shaiju Khalid. Because I'm, this is such a big movie, I need the best mind out there to shoot this. Mm. I was very nervous to see him. Like, we haven't worked before. We only mm. like, you know, like, I, you know, I haven't even met him before. Like, mm. We only know about each him. other's existence. <laughs> but, so I met him and he's a very, very nice guy to work with. Very chill and very down to earth and very humble. They, you don't feel like you're... Sitting with a big cinematographer like you're sitting with Rajiv. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So uh, I was very keen to bag him. So Sh Sh Saubin called Saubin is very good. They have done Kumbhangi nights. Mm, yeah. like Sudari from Nigeria. Yeah. So Saubin sent me there. I told him the story, and he was instantly hooked as a. And he then he understood it's a. And he haven't done any large scale films. So yeah. All his films are under 40 days. Oh. So this is also his first film that he's shooting for 100. Days. So like we were both learning together and and he got fantastic ACs yeah. and gaffers and we lit the whole Buna cave and it was like perfect daylight. If you look like this it you won't feel it. It was perfect daylight and we shifted tones on short and we shifted exposures on short when the cloud comes in. So a lot of things like that and we and uh, we had a huge light mixer outside and mm. it was like on call. So and then when uh, so when we say rain, the whole thing, it was one shot, there's one yeah. pullback shot, the whole uh, tone and the lighting changes. And it was all pretty experimental, so mm. it was game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because one, one of the great things after Aravindan's, uh, you know, where who had distinct looks mm -hmm. of, uh, from Pokuvel is so different, yeah, from yeah. Chidambaram mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, Kumati, Kumati yeah. he had, this man has done similarly, you know, when you see Kumbhangi Nights, yes. it's so different from Sudani. Yeah, yeah. So different from Joji, he he gets the landscape in, you know. Yeah. I think. And he's very good, and I think his his, his lens range is between mostly twenty five to fifty. He doesn't want to go to beyond fifty, like. So he, it's always wide, and for this film also, and and for the aspect ratio, like we chose for the one 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 eight five mm. because we needed more height. Mm. Because if you're shooting an ocean or a desert, I think the anamorphic mm, works will way work. better. But this has more height and. Each, because when you go to big mountains, if you're, if you're seeing a mountain for the first time, it, it actually is, uh, what do you say, a bit intimidating. Mm. You have to look like this. It, yeah. it, it goes uh, from like, uh, uh, like your island, you have to look up. Mm. So I wanted that feel uh, in the movie. And it mm. works better in an IMAX screen or epic screen. Yeah. So in a flat screen. Uh, so yeah, so uh, uh, lensing was like most of the time wide. So uh, uh, I always say, Shaiduka, I want scale, but I don't know how. There's no dance or anything, but I want scale. <laughs> yeah. And it should look huge. So we so went for a red, which are, uh, I think, monstro, I think, which has a big mm. sensor. Mm. So uh, even though we go for a 50 mm, it still feels like a wide. And it mm. is uh, like a medium format camera. Yeah. We really like to approach like that. Yeah. So, mm. I, I think uh, I, I felt that there wasn't an extra shot in the film. Every shot was like perfect and also, you know, there is details of small close-ups which bring out incredible amount of texture. Mm -hmm. There are shots yeah, which, which surprised me in, in, the, in the pulling sequence in the end, you know, where he, they, when they let, say, let go loose and mm -hmm. you know their feet, feet sliding. And yeah. even there, even in the wide angle, it's difficult to say it's a set because mm, yeah. the the feel is so it's a combination of lighting and texture and uh, you know so many mm. elements of tones that you have managed to get in. There was also um, a thing about um, you know the the claustrophobia that you managed to get in and that coming into the fall. So how was the Fall done with wire tricks and how how, how many people were uh, involved? Basi falling. Yeah. That was full 3D. Oh. oh. So it was my VFX team. <coughs> so it is. We tried shooting a couple of segments, but it was too hard. We can never do it with Srinath. Uh -huh. But we tried with a standard step. <laughs> it was too brutal, hmm. and he broke his teeth or something like he hit his head. So we said, okay, let's go for full 3D, but he. Sensor, like till sensor, I hadn't seen this full 3D. Mm. 
and I was very nervous how it will turn out. So mm. you have to dim the lights, you don't have to see it fully. So that means that adds to the feel of it. Mm. But the last two shots are real. Mm. Uh, the last two impact and like he's uh, like lying up. Other, so I uh, asked Basi, you fall, you die, and you give me a shahru <laughs> 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 So I asked him to die actually. So, he, so, you, so that, that's how it was done. And the fall was uh, how we did was like in Unreal Engine, we made a whole structure. Oh. Then we put, uh, we had a physics engine. So we mm. put uh, uh, like almost the same body like in VFX. Like we put that body, we uh, recorded it. And then we placed virtual cameras here and there. And we broke down the shots. So it was a complete uh, pre-vis. Uh, pre -vis, <laughs> 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 like, we didn't think about it. And the VFX team was also over They thought it was like a small problem. And they, they were, and they took a lot of movies. Like there were a lot of releases light up for them. And, and the it was a final call, let's do it full 3D. And while shooting also, it was too hard. We tried, but it was too hard to achieve it. Yeah. But when, when he's being pulled up, mm -hmm. you had you said you had wire people coming in yeah, from yeah, Bombay. Yeah. So, uh, my stand director is uh, Vikram Dahiya. Hmm. So, it is a very technical job. Right? Because hmm. uh, the rope pulley system was very complex. Hmm. And it, uh, there are like three ropes for hmm. one person. The, hmm. the rope, the set rope. Hmm. Then the one rope, which is like actually like holding him in place and mm. two other ropes to like adjust its position. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, so it is a very physically demanding thing to like, so even if you see so, uh, Saubin is 40 feet high in there, so that is still dangerous. And mm. so uh, the ropes is, rope technique was like very, and uh, it got more complicated when they attached Basi or something and were pulling him up. So there were like six, seven ropes going here and there, the communication should be uh, like uh, very precise. Uh, one time we had an incident like uh, there are two ropes, one for Basi and one for uh, Saubin, and mm. one in between them. Mm. So we said cut, and one day pulled down, and one day pulled up. So uh, Saubin was like, he could have like split into two. Oh my god. And that really Saubin told me that he heard his like vertebrae crack, tack, tack. Oh my god. So that was only uh, mishap we had. We had an incredible uh, rope team. It was very technical also. Yeah. So even the rock they are pulling, you know, mm -hmm. so it goes to the pulley and uh, goes down. It's only 15 feet. Oh. So from there, we had to like take them outside, put a counterweight to them, so these guys can like feel the tension. Oh. So that was also very complex. Okay, so a lo lot of physics. A lot of ropes. A <laughs> lot of ropes and a lot, lot of physics. A lot of ropes and pulleys and it was like science project. So <laughs> how, how many days did you uh, shoot with ropes? We shot for some 15, 20 days. Oh my God! Okay. That was huge. A like, like, lot of crew was needed, like to achieve that. So the pit, you know, it was built in three sectors: 50 feet, 50 feet. 50. So mm -hmm. You need like 150 feet, and the last piece was is the is where Basi is lying down. Mm -hmm. So there was three pieces, mm -hmm. and uh, one side was open, mm -hmm. and we uh, had a 70 feet zip mm -hmm. to like shoot it. So that's how mm -hmm. we shot it. Mm -hmm. And for the pit sequence, we used a cine ultra. Because oh. it has a 3200 native. Oh. The rest of the film was shot in film. Oh, wonderful. And it had the Rialto system, you can like take, yeah, it, take it from the recorder and like yeah. bring it closer. So, for the form factor, you, you went, uh, that's the, it's like wired out and you could yeah, take yeah, the yeah. lens closer. So, we, we, uh, we could do like head mounts and everything without sacrificing the sensor size. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And uh, now when, 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 you were, when you finished shooting this film and the edit was running par parallelly, yeah, we had an edit room, uh, like, uh, like we had a huge screen because we wanted to see, like because it's a set and uh, we, we needed a huge screen. So edit, my editor, uh, like I had a spot edit, uh, but my editor was not, editor like my uh, real uh, on, uh, online edit happened after the film, but I had a spot editing team and we had an edit room. So every day, every interval we go and like check the edit and we show the people edit, show people edit and like take suggestions from like, so it was like a big meeting room for all the crew yeah, and you you had quite i mean how do you handle 10 chaps who are mm -hmm. acting in the film 10 egos how do you convince them that their role is really very important and not let them overact yeah, yeah and on top of it one of the actors is a reluctant director who is acting, right? <laughs> who has just come out of a successful <coughs> film, like Tallumal as director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, do you, how do you handle that? 
you know, actor, uh, directing directors are actually very easy because yeah. they know what's happening and all, <laughs> and they know like the value of time. And yeah. it, but rest of them, it was like a. ফেল্ট That was, it was, uh, it made my brief so easy. I'm not like brief every one of them about what else. I just gave him, gave them the documentary. So in your script, how much of the dialogue is fixed? How much of the scene is fixed? How much do you improvise on set? Uh, a lot. If I'm writing, I don't, blo- I don't write blocking in. So I just, yeah. they both enter, they sit and they talk. Ah. I won't say how they walked in, like, why, like they, he pulled a chair, I won't like that. So I let them do it. But you write dialogues? Yeah, I write dialogues and the placeholders, like ah. mostly. And say, well, this is the thing you have to say. Hmm. But say it in a very uh, casual, domestic kind of way, like, like for example, Endana Devam. Hmm. Okay, that's why the Endana Machana Devam. Like. Hmm. So there ah. are small, small tweaks that we do. Yeah. And uh, before the fall, It's more chaotic, like they're running around, playing, mm. so that, I didn't direct at all, I just like put camera on my and do whatever you want. Mm. And from that master shot, I have to divide. I have to see no. the master shot, okay, okay, well, let's put a ghost here, let's put a suggestion here. Mm. So that's how I work. Mm. And after the fall of the film, the whole language changes. Mm. Then everything is, every blocking, everyone's movement, because it's happening in, a, uh, uh, in, a, in the same space in a continuous time. So, mm. so you have to tell this dialogue, go, go to that mark, so that was, much cold after the fall before the mm. fall it was a t- totally different version yeah so uh, uh, after you have uh, the the i mean you 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 direct the scene first mm-hmm. and then you do the short division yeah exactly, exactly so when you do short division mm-hmm. do you do it like uh, like it's like multiple cameras working or you perform it again and again we both like uh, single cameras yeah because it's very uh, Yeah, lighting <laughs> wise, <laughs> concentration. Yeah, concentration and two cam, like we only get like multiple cams when if it's raining or a stunt, or, uh, like only and crowd, lot of crowd, then only we get multiple cameras. But if, so that's why like Shaijo Khan is, is very a uh, 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 storyteller camera. Yeah. And each dialogue, after we do the master, then we, the, or a dialogue, like, should, if we don't, we would, uh, seldom goes to a close. Mm. Otherwise, we always keep it in a medium wide range. We uh, only go personal, like if the dialogue is too important. Yeah. Otherwise, we uh, keep it wide and oro, and we don't uh, repeat accesses. Like we yeah. try not to. Yeah. So, uh, like we let them. Yeah, you, you see that slight difference in the style when he goes and meets a psychiatrist and mm. post the fall. Yeah, yeah. There is a kind of distance mm-hmm. that that the camera has. The camera is not participating yeah. like that. So it's a very in, a slight subtle difference. But in those, I think three or four scenes, mm-hmm. from the time he's lying in his house to his mm-hmm. he mother and he there, and uh, I think even that abuse that the mother gives to uh, thing yeah. it, that that entire section when they are in that government hospital too. Mm-hmm. Then after that, even the even the psychiatrist sort of telling that's what the guy when the camps, he tries to close his eyes you see the track and all really that. Close yeah that. you see a different cinema coming in and there are a lot of centered compositions it's not like left mm-hmm. center and thing you you he's he is your main person yes, so yes, yes, yes. most of the time basi is the center of the yeah, film yeah even the pine forest sequence and yeah. the boy gets out of the barrel and it's so like i wanted to be like very symmetrical yeah you know. even when the children were running mm. you had four boys mm. you had roughly same space here and here and you had composed them in the center yeah. so i found that uh, a style kind of uh, as a style because you you have a lot of sky and the floor mm. and similarly the water and the thing 
So there was a, some kind of openness, even the destroyed, um, uh, what do you call, factory. All these things, you know, sort of, I, and this whole setting up of somebody hiding, then somebody saving somebody, and then this rope pulling. Was there really a tug of war in these fellows? Did they have a... No, they, they, they have a team. They have um, a team. They go for competitions. But, but, but you created this like story. The climax, yeah, of you, you created the story of them losing and yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were losing uh, like, uh, in, uh, in the first place, but they turned their uh, what, what the loss victory into victory. Yeah. So this idea of let it keep loose and pull, uh, where did you get that idea from? Reels. I was just scrolling, then I like, chanced upon a reel of tug of war and they were like, uh, and that's where I saw that technique first. Uh -huh. You tied the rope, you let it go, so the other team like loose bands and then you pull it in. Ah, okay. So I thought like, it was a cool thing to do. <laughs> yeah, because that has a lot of impact in in the yeah, in yeah, the yeah, climax. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is a actual story that you have of interviews. What is the writing structure you bring in into the screenplay which holds the film together? <clears throat> actual event and what did you add and how do you control the story? The thing is like. Uh, uh, my first of all, I, I shouldn't lose anything. Like I like, should like at least ten percentage of what they uh, what they went through if it comes to scale, I know it will work. Hmm. Okay, that much the, the uh, yeah, experience of that was in, intense. And for writing, I don't know how the how my structure and I just write and I, I for me like I can't say this, this is the thing. I, I there are three acts, you know, so hmm. I s s uh, divide each act into three. Hmm. So that is nine. Hmm. So then I have like 10 scenes for mm. this, so I, I have to come up with 90 points, then I'll have a finished movie. Yeah, because you know, you, you are structurally very sound because the fall happens around the 30th yeah, minute, yeah, yeah. which is pretty much exactly like Hollywood, which they say that the inciting incident must be 27. Yeah. I said, wow, <laughs> Ch Chids has managed to drop the fellow exactly three minutes off from yeah. where it was intended. But that's that accuracy is so important because if you conventionally take Cinema, commercial cinema, they'll say, interval block long, we the town. You didn't do that. You actually took it up right in the beginning. And uh, so, when you were writing this, what was your, how did you think you would put an interval block? What is going to be the. I was very keen that before the interval block, like before, like after, like everyone, before everyone goes out, they should know what you know, and they, all the stakes they should know. Like, hmm. nobody has come out, this is the history of the game and started raining. Then hmm. you can go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do they hear the sound before uh, the uh, the interval block? Uh, do they hear the sound? There's no hope. No, no, no hope. And it's just know, it's unknown. We don't show Basi before mm. the interval. So, for he's gone from all our sight. Like, that's how I want to treat him. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like a horror film. Yeah, exactly. Horror film turning into yeah, a yeah, yeah. this thing. So, amongst the actors, who was the most difficult for you to handle? Equally, <laughs> because once they all get to no, the one is a producer, oh, one is a producer. Producer, also, I have to come to my producer, and I have to like remind him that he is a producer sometimes. Uh, like, uh, once they all get together, it's a mob, hmm. so, so it's hard to control. So. Your class monitor, you become. <laughs> and I deputed all that to other boys, but yeah, it's hard to control them. Like everyone, like. So they, it is a very physically and psychologically demanding film to shoot in Kodai to get wet in the morning running and you have to act, you have to act in the side of the play, you have to run and you, have, you can't die also. Like, <laughs> 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 all, all those things are there. Mm. So they really helped me like, to pull this off. Other if it was a country actor and who, who I am not very thick with, um, we would have obviously had a fight. Yeah. Now, uh, after going through such a physical film where there was something so real, there are so many elements which you have said about, you know, you went there first time, you s smelled the lime, you, somebody gave you an irimba uh, mm. thing and you did that in the film and you saw the, the, the skull of the, uh, the thing and you have that. Mm. So there is a certain uh, autobiographical quality of what you experienced when you went to the yeah, cave. Yeah, yeah. Then you have the memory of what they did mm. and then it's the sheer physical rigor of uh, this, you know, uh, redemption, I mean, sorry, what I would call resurrection. Mm. And that, when the person comes out and he sits there, mm. that, you know, that poor lady coming and saying, mm. touch, touch his leg, because he's like God, he has come so, out of uh, death. 
so the, th those things you know I, I work like so big in in tamil nadu and especially the dialogues uh, when he came then they came in touch and also the end dialogue what do you find is a difference in reception between what you got in tamil nadu and what you got in in kerala okay first of all i will tell you about that god scene uh, hmm. so when i spoke to subhash hmm. and i went listen to everything the immediate story that stuck into me is this is a story about, about an atheist no. who turns himself into god wow i just didn't believe it so that is my first then i built the story around oh so that is the base layer of the story so yeah. saapathu vadavan kadavul appo appo kaapathana kadavul illa appo yaar appo ellarum kaapathana nobody is god but everyone is god mm -hmm. so that is like i want to say that oh so i built the story around it culturally we are similar but also entirely different mm -hmm. watching movies mm -hmm. the energy and reactively we watch movies here i think mm -hmm. and the scenes uh, which like really connected here is of course the like climax song when uh, he comes out and kanwar is being played and that really worked out here mm -hmm. and kerala people you can't say kerala people watch like this you know <laughs> 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 i don't know i look at their face and i can think we just you know, But they really enjoy it, but they are not as reactive as Tamil audience. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very subtle. <laughs> so this. I'll go home and text you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you, in some ways, I, I mean, in your wildest dreams, while making the film, ever visualize this kind of success or this kind of reception from Kamal and the industry? No, we were not at all ready for this. Yeah. We were. I'm still like, still, I'm like. We wake up from the dream, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I woke up to Rathri Kaan. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw Rathri Kaan in the morning, and it was. I also get to watch the movie with Rathri uh, Kamal sir. Yeah. yeah. Singing them, that was. Yeah. That was also a very humbling experience. Even yeah. The film is doing great in the theaters, but here you see all the masses like coming back and like celebrating a legend. So that is a, that was a truly humbling. So, yeah. so there was an interesting incident. We both were in a dinner with, and Mr. Kamala Hassan was there, and we three were three of us. Malus. you know we decided to eat because we were feeling hungry so while we were eating then uh, kamal was watching hey these mallus are sitting there yeah, mallu table so, mallu table he said and he came and sat there and he said uh, so is some question about mumbai express uh, it was addressed to uh, narayan was saying uh, uh, mahesh uh, was saying mahesh was saying so suddenly he started telling us a story and he had shots he had a characters everything i mean so we are saying we are looking like i haven't seen this film is probably one <coughs> kamal film we have missed mm. but the shots where uh, what is happening yeah. what is the dog eating what is does the dog shitting everything he had shots for it and then after around one hour we had to say listen when is the interval block coming mm -hmm. you know they, because he has all the shots then you realize that the film he didn't make he remembers all the films like by heart and yeah, it was yeah, yeah. unbelievable that yeah, night yeah, yeah. how he could remember so much and so much in love with and cinema so much in love he knows dialogues and everything of film that he has made like it's just <laughs> and this is some 15 20 years back yeah. it's truly the thing so yeah so you have been now completely co-opted it's most likely that at this rate you will also get a film from talipat or is talivar and uh, what do you call vijay and everybody going to call you but you have a story to tell mm. what story you want to tell what kind of story do you want to tell i want to do a historical drama piece i want to do a vaakal but i don't know how i'm sure it's very hard and like i will want to blame myself as a second day should end up <laughs> <laughs> so i did after you know, doing manjimal also there were a lot of days i just lost it and i should not done this and we should have started this this is too much So that was like because I I couldn't crack a lot of the things. It was like me and Shahid were like sitting and looking at each other. How do we crack this? How do we open this? How do we close this? Mm. So that was really tough. It was not at all smooth. Yeah. Yeah. So next time I want to do a period drama. I think like I don't know. No, but it's a voyage, right? So you yes. want to go into char areas we haven't gone. Course, so that's course. that's what I makes. I want to do a movie twice. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So after this, you now think you're going to make a film in Tamil or Malayalam? I don't know, maybe Tamil. <laughs> Tamil. Yeah, yeah. Or somewhere in the bo border. I don't know. I'll do Tamil and go back. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So we are opening it out to the boys and girls here. Anybody wanting some questions? You know, a lot of times when we are shooting, you know, there are a lot of screw ups that happens, and production wants you to compromise. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't. And so how do you handle that? Like how do you? Because anyway, then. they may be not as artistic as you they don't know the film as much as you do because it's written also 
So how do you tackle with those things? Uncertainty is part of shoot, I guess. So I'm not very, I'm not taken by surprise of like uh, that light is not working, camera didn't come, hard disk is missing. So I'm, we are not, <laughs> it always happens, motor game is not working. It's, so <laughs> it happens all the time. So we, like, even when, when we, like, when it's a Mohan sir, it's a Bollywood with the motor game issue. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so, uh, but my production was very supportive and they were like, I, I will go to my production and say, uh, let's cut that scene. It's gonna be like it's gonna cost us a lot. And they'll say, why you don't think about it? You do that, you do it because so that's how Sovian operates. That's how that's why I was able to make this work. What more a director can ask for? Huh? What more a director can ask for? What more? What more? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I can ask them to come over also. <laughs> so my question is more towards acting. I know we briefly talked about a few acting elements. So when you were dealing with actors, what was one thing it was difficult for you to handle during the shots? Like any particular elements that you'd be like want actors to work on? Or? Yeah, so it was hard. It is very hard to keep track of everyone. Eleven boys in the frame, and after the fall, their emotions graph no so it is very hard so i just think like i can't keep track you have to keep track of it when you cry you can't cry yet then soon after he falls everyone comes uh, the scene and about go to like like should i start crying now or should i be tense and that was a very hard decision to take so i i like i kept them like i gave them the charge you do it but you remember you don't forget i cried that so I gave them space like now that this is your high point, this scene is your high point. So I distributed the high points to like each other. So it was easy for to like do the acting. Got it. So you wanted them to take care of the emotion graphs and like continuity. Yeah, yes, exactly. I, I don't want to direct too much on the actions or emotions. I just say like and it is uh, it is a breeze to direct out it. Just have to say a simple brother. I just a small small brief. So I'll say like, let the bit of okay, they know that, like, we have a link like that. How, how, how much of the film was live sound? Because I, I see a lot of the pictures, a lot of booms uh, yeah. running around and all. Did you have any live sound portion or yeah, 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 yeah. everything no, was dubbed? That was for pilot. Oh, yeah, yeah. you dubbed everything? No, because our set to work was going on simultaneously, there was a lot of welding. And also rain and so on. Rain and everything, so it was not practical to... And if people are running, you but would no, hear the... Yeah, the, yeah, then we had to like uh, rub up at the whole cave, so it was a bit hard. But yeah, of course, uh, I regretted that I couldn't do live sound. A lot of emotions were lost. Oh. Dubbing the other body. Yeah. Like, so what, what was it to sort of relive the film in the dubbing theatre? How long did you dub? We dubbed for like two months or three months. There were a lot of characters. And we, uh, Chennai dubbing was very fast. Mm. And like uh, super te technicians and like... Uh, I, uh, uh, in Chennai, uh, what I understood is that this uh, technicians, the recordist, they are also like very much into the movie. They say the counter dialogues and all. Yeah. They give like any what an AD does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. always like that. Like I mean the studio recorders. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was uh, great. And it was a very I thought like uh, Tamil would take over. Tamil like Tamil dubbing will be finished within a week. Amazing. No, about the casting of since you spoke about the Tamil actors, uh, the casting of the Tamil actors was really quite well done. And uh, the way you made them act, and the main key character, no, the uh, the key cop, who, uh, the, the SI. SI, yeah, he was so subtle, and he was able to, um, you know, work with the actors and keep with their emotion. He kept pace with them, you know. He was most irritated; he couldn't eat his lunch, mm -hmm. and then he had to forsake that biryani and then come and look after these nuts who oh, okay, okay, okay. had a good time. You know, like uh, how did you choose all these people? And we had a long audition process in Chennai. A lot of friends had Ramsi uh, Ramachandran, who acted as the guide, and he was like, yeah. yeah. So he was a friend of my brother. So he helped us to find a lot of people because it's a it's not our industry. We don't know who's who's the talent in like. So he was he, like he already had a and the, what I uh, like uh, noticed about uh, Tamil actors is like I had an audition call and it was flooded. Like the next day, like there were like a lot of in Kerala. I think people won't come. You need audition. No, I already acted three films. Why do you need my audition? Here, like they are acting many films, but still they come. That is how it should be done, mm. and I totally respect that. And that's how I got like we got a lot of options, and from other it was hard to choose actually. Mm. Then it was then the challenge was uh, directing Tamil and Malayalam actors in the same frame. 
So both are two different meters and it's two different movies. So that was, I, I also understood it, oh, Nancy is a so I had to like uh, bring Tamil down and Malayal Punjab to balance it. Which is what I noticed about the cop scene, you know, <laughs> because he had to come down. He was yeah, actually he down. overacting first uh, and then he came down. <laughs> first, I want to thank uh, Rajiv Menon so for making my dream come true to see you. <laughs> I want to know how did he create a Subhash, uh, that arc of his character? Because all the time I see, when I see this, after seeing that movie, I used to go in the street and keep just screaming, Shubhash, Shubhash, wherever I go. That's what I know. I told you, know, so I, I, I identified that this is a story about an atheist becoming God. So that is the arc and that is in, from his life only. So I didn't like, I had to make it. A lot of the arcs are like, taken from that made my life, as well, my job is here. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two questions on the, on the, on the story. Um, one is uh, the mother-son relationship that you wanted to show between Shubhash and his mother. So to me, it, it felt like um, he, she was a lot closer to the second child. Uh, there were very specific shots where you showed she was sleeping next to the, the second child. And that probably gave, did that cause the nightmares for him? Because eventually when she comes and sleeps, uh, next to Subhash, uh, towards the end, it felt like he got all right. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, you remember the scene where uh, Sixer is calling when he wakes up? So remember the scene where uh, you hear his voice for the first time, he opens his eyes? Yeah. So there is a montage of uh, him, like a small Subhash waking up, maybe a nightmare, maybe he felt cold or something, he goes next to his mother and sleeps. Yeah. And that's the most comfortable place, walk like. Then we immediately cut to his which is a wet, cold place and it's dark. So even how big you are, how small you are, you once you come your mother touches and you can sleep, you can sleep fine. So I think that's what, and I met his mother, Ratnama. She brought these kids, like her husband left her, like I mean like he died uh, very young. Uh, and the second child was only uh, two or three weeks old. When Subhash's father died. So she uh, like uh, brought up these two brats. <laughs> and, and she's a very strong woman, so I wanted that character to be there in the film. And I want like even this big, ass, big grown man, like he, he can't sleep, but his mother's touch can like, make him sleep. And you know why he had nightmares? Because uh, actually he couldn't sleep for uh, the next six months. But whenever he closes his eyes, it goes dark and it takes him back there. So he couldn't close his eyes and sleep for six months. And now also he has some problems, because his trauma was not addressed back then. So, it was not known like he should, there should there will be a I have one more question, sir. Uh, so I wanted to double click on the mythical overtone uh, you are talking about. So you have uh, Arumugam, uh, Velayudam, who are names of Murugan, Lord Muruga. But you also have Thomas and Dominic, and you give the fireman name as Kadriyasan. Uh, which, which, sorry, sir? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, how, what was your idea behind that, that was character? The idea. Just give yes. <laughs> Dominic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. One last question. Sorry, I'm taking. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, there was a certain oppression angle that you brought in the movie through the police officers. Um, uh, while the anger was very true, like you know, you spoiled my day. Uh, yeah. um, was there any other reason why you brought in that oppression angle into the movie? Because it, because it happened in real life, and I actually toned it down. It was much worse. They took all the money from them, even after the rescue. If they are living there, they carry their purse. They only they were only left with diesel money to get back home. So in reality, it was much worse. But uh, when making the film, I, I thought it was unwanted. Just so I just stick to that part. And uh, we can't blame the cops also. You are not supposed to go there. And a lot of murders happen there. And they murder someone and they report it as an accident. It happens there all the time. And it was also a time after the elections. The whole reshuffle of the police station was going. How did you work uh, with uh, music? Music, my uh, uh, solution was very. He was, he was very uh, like, uh, enthusiastic to score this thing because he, he was also doing for the first time like this kind of a movie. So my brief to him was 
for the cave we should have a theme and we use horns like old war horns for it so it, it, it creates a feeling of the i don't know very uh, what what stone is prehistoric thing very ancient thing which is there some the cave is uh, other other like that that's why we use the horns and why we getting down the i guess in the sound design i ask the sound design to i need the sound of roots growing underground wow but you can hear there is no sound for it but you can imagine a sound for it and there are like lot of synth sounds like which coming from the hole it's like a hungry stomach you know burps and all coming from the that of the brief i like my beats are very abstract like that <laughs> so you are almost in the vairamuthu zone <laughs> because vairamuthu has the favorite favorite line kadumbarai taandi veeraga vandu kannalan mugam paathu <laughs> okay <laughs> so it's like kadumbarai taandi like you're just going the veer is going down yeah it's a very phil- i mean poetic thing this is actually a little out of the movie but i generally wanted to ask because film making is today you had a big release now you're having now everybody is liking your work and everything but your last movie release in i think 2020 2001 and 2011 so 20 and 3 years so how do you take on to that no yeah no no not survive but next now i have to do this like you, you must be now after this also you must be how do you So because you put in a lot of time thinking about this then there is a switching process now you have to think about a new story yeah. how do you do that the thing is i take my own sweet time to like arrive at the story and write it so i might i think you know, the intervals between my films will only grow bigger i think two years three years i think i you need two years three years to like think that about the film when you start writing do you also you feel the reference do you feel that your previous work is a little coming into that or how do you maintain that not just not just from your previous work from all the works i have seen it's very supportive you, you won't even know if it is like challenging to you to it so i think uh, yeah how do you keep yourself in check huh? how do you keep that in check i don't know i tell me if i write the story for the power the the more in you like i i've seen this somewhere if you've seen this okay but you won't even know what all influence all the works you have seen all the Hi. Uh, so the first question that I had, the reason that I came today was, sir, ask that question. If the tug of war really happened in the end, or like what was the situation? That was my actual question. But since you told that it was done for the climax uh, purpose, what was the actual? Actual, uh, like actual. I think if you show the actual thing, it will be very boring. Like they just. pulling him pulling him up and right. that's it like all the people right right because throughout the film it felt like a very natural like almost a docu feature film till this this point so that was yeah, my only yeah, question that I, like, yeah yeah i know i know for, for the climax then right. there should be a bottle like moment then the great release so like that it was purely cinematic choice to do that in so the, real life or the uh, the fire force people these boys were like sent out Oh, okay. That's that's all I have. Yeah, only three people yeah. remained. Okay, the rest of the boys were sent out. So I thought it won't look good in the film. Yeah. Okay, let's. <laughs> so I wanted uh, them, everyone in one row, all the uh, people in one row in climax. So it's the uh, invisible rope that connects all of them. That's writing. Yeah. <laughs> that's writing because what you have done is you have made the losers into winners. and then you have one person coming and telling keep it loose and there's a strategy to win when all is lost the other thing that i wanted to ask was the, the first thing, thing that, that i watched the movie i think 3 or 4 days after it released movie, but what i heard i don't watch trailers to films heard, because that kind of i don't know i i don't usually watch but the first thing everyone told was this is a theater film this is a theater film so like and it has been running for a very long time now So, did you, while making it, think, did okay, this is a theatre film, or this should survive on OTT as well? Was there any kind of a thought process to that? Because now, I think every filmmaker will go for a big screen only. And see, we think of big screen. We think of a collective mass uh, audience reception. How will they? How a, a collective uh, audience will uh, respond to this thing? So we think like that. I mean, we don't think, okay, this can be an OTT movie. So let's. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. And but my format, I like. But when it comes to my to the TV, uh, the screen will be full. There won't be bars or anything. So I thought about that also. Yeah, that's what I. Because the movie will be surviving screen for a long time.
uh, many days have elapsed after seeing the movie. Yesterday, all our students went. I could not go. I have so much to ask and uh, discuss along with the visuals. Mm. Everything appears to be something different, not like other uh, films. Uh, uh, there are so many um, uh, ways we can look at the film. Uh, it also, I thought it's the right type of film. We should have discussed with student how to make a film, what are new things can be explored. Uh, that's what I have give, sent a message to Rajiv also. There are n number of ways a film can be taught. <laughs> I never expected I will see a movie or something like this on the, the screen also. And uh, you nicely uh, mixed up the... I mean, you made a lot of drama. I could see it. As you say that, without drama, people will not see it also. Yeah, yeah. Some, some places we have to exaggerate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is there, and you are trying to connect their memories also. Yeah with the uh, things that is happening there. Those are all very good uh, things. Uh, rarely people do it. <laughs> I use that uh, cut bags also to like reduce the fatigue of like being inside the cave. Really use, uh, show the audience some sky, some open and then you bring them back in. So it's more that, uh, it's like a breather. You know? No, it is uh, rightly used. I, I, I think there was another thing that sir was, uh, I mean, uh, Chidambaram was saying, which actually sir referred to and and you had also mentioned was about uh, the scale. He kept saying he wanted scale even though you were taking a, a close-up. And I think that sort of, you know, is a very important point for every student to look at. Because what happens is, if you just take tele for the very comfortable thing and say tele close-up, tele close-up cut, then what happens is the, the storytelling suddenly becomes like a TV serial. A TV serial is also telling you a story and then when you just zoom in and you just see two walls, I mean it doesn't look like anything. So that's one of the reasons why you need to be in block and even then you know you need to be seeing something which is telling you uh, some uh, the story is big. I think that's an important learning that uh, there is some epic quality to that frame and uh, the way it's being done. Yeah. Uh, as you are saying, we only use very little, 85 mm, 135 mm, like very little. Barely there, yeah. Barely is there. 40, 35, that is the range. We yeah. Have. We yeah. like to go closer to the subject and to feel them from away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, my name is Andrew. I am from Kochi actually. We both are from Kochi. Uh, so we were like, uh, many of them tried to do the script, but still left it. But what made you, what gave you the confidence to do this? Confidence is the time that I decided to make this movie. But, uh, I think uh, most of them approached them around 10 years ago when the news came out of uh, over there. At that time, Malayalam film didn't have this much fun flow or scale or veracity to do it. I think the, uh, before it was all before the OTT and everything. We didn't have that wider audience. And it's very hard for a producer like Saabi to come by also. So we, uh, even though Saabi was the producer, we had a lot of investor meetings. So it was very hard to convince the investors because they don't know anything about film. They only think about the return of investment, who's the star, who's the, you know, how many songs are there, why do they count the money. So you, you should, everyone, like a lot of factors also. And uh, the production designer, like, uh, first of all, we didn't, uh, first of all, before going to Bona, I didn't know uh, I had to build that set. I'm shooting in Bona, we'll get permission mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. First day I went in, I understood this film was impossible. Then I understood why people liked it. Abandon this project. Then I got a question inside the Ragula. You know, it's too much. You can't shoot here. Someone will die, I'm sure. Benjamin goes too, will happen. <laughs> <laughs> he will die. And that will be a movie about movie people trying to make a movie about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so a lot of things were there. But sure, then finally, we, my production designer said, okay, let's build it. And I never, like, I never had the because my name. We work in Malala films, we never, when Amit tries to build a set there, no, like, you don't see. <laughs> He'll say, like, we mostly shoot in available locations in India also. So, um, so yeah, my production designer said, we can achieve this, and my producer also said, okay, then let's do it. Then the, the thing was worth to put it. In Canada, we don't have that much huge floor. In Chennai, the, uh, only two floors are there, and more than like shooting is happening. Then there is a Ramoji. 
Going everyone going to Ramoji and like doing it will be another like it will be double or triple the budget we have. So we finding a place to work. So we found a warehouse like in the outskirts of Kochi. Not in Pehlgaon. Yeah, Pehlgaon. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of things. I mean, now I know exactly because I also now I know why they abandoned back then. It was not not an easy thing to do and uh, also the funds. Like somebody like all they they were. They were uh, it should be a lot of fun to do. Things. Even the, to do this. Film very basically, you need 15 rows to achieve it. Like very basically, no, without you can cut the camera, you can cut the actors, you will do newcomers or anything. Or you slim down the techniques, you will at least need 10 full rows to like just to say the story. Uh, my name is John. I am also from Kochi. I I really love the film. I also like Shaijo Kali's work. So immersive. It felt so real. So. Uh, um, the Manjumail church, um, there's a church there, right? Initially also it was shown uh, a big church. So does it have any signifi significance because in the end the priest conveys the heroic act with all of the people. So does it have any... Uh, it have any? Church is it's, it's a, la it's a uh, landmark of Manjumail. Yeah. The Manjumail church is very famous. Manjumail Bali is <laughs> very famous. So it really happened that way. It was the news clipping. Uh, we, we got it from Tamil Nadu, then we took it to the uh, father. Then on Sunday was he announced. Then he was also like, uh, like one of our boys, went into the mouth of the devil. Took, uh, like, so it was like a very, very divine thing for him. The yeah, the yeah, yeah. resurrection yeah. comes through very strongly. It was a, it was a symbolic kind of David and Goliath kind of thing that father like got through. So I felt like the uh, there is uh, in Christianity, like uh, Christ goes into Hades and um, preaches among the dead and comes back. So I felt some connection like that. So, so he defeats defeats death, defeats death and come back, comes back. You told that it was about he becoming God. So something. Yeah. No, I think there are strong uh, mythical undertones inside uh, the film, whether it is the Murugan myth or whether it is the uh, the the devil's kitchen. So you, you are talking about in that sense, there is a hidden dark force which is just consuming you. And the nether world is always seen as the world that down, the area where dead live. So when, because you bury the people in the earth, so there is always a belief that that's what it is. And that's why, you know, when you talk about uh, gangsters, you call it the underworld, you, you know. You can call it something else. They are not necessarily living in the sewers. But the reason why things are said, and this is the first film you actually use that. I mean, you have Pata Lok, uh, a series about that. And they also, you know, Deva Lok is supposed to be on top and we live here and the <coughs> Pata Lok. But here, you know, actually to go down there and the uh, Christian idea of resurrection uh, with the Murugan idea of the Guru Goha, I think there is a lot of things. There's also a kind of a parallel that what I found between Janiman and here is your abhorrence for a single protagonist and your ability to see story, stories with a group of friends. Is that conscious or it is just natural? It's, na it's not conscious at all. I mean, I, initially, when I started writing Manumas, I thought of like, let's cut this down. Let's make it five words. So mm -hmm. then I concentrate. I really like, but then it's a real story, and I mean, it, it would be a crime to do that. Like all these boys will come and watch the movie, and they'll ask, "Where am I in this movie?" Mm. So I, I can't do this. So that's why I went with all of them, and it was not a call. It was, it was not called to happen natural. Mm. And Janiman uh, also like, I don't know where all these characters came from. <laughs> so I was writing, and like suddenly there were a lot of characters. So it was not quite comes out naturally. And there also you have a very strong conflict between. A pregnant woman and a dying person, mm -hmm. and a person who's going to coming to celebrate his birthday, and uh, then death on yeah, the yeah, other yeah, side. Yeah. So I'm, we're all the Janma Dinum, we're all the Marano. You know, you have that kind of a, yeah. a conflict uh, coming in. So it's it's yes, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, he, he he's waiting. Hi, uh, my name is Krishan Kartik. Uh, while watching the movie, it was a basically thriller experience. At the same time. At the same time, for me, it was uh, more of horror experience also. So while writing, did you feel that fear in you? Like, 
you had to visualize that. And uh, for me, while watching the movie, it was an immersive experience. So I felt as if some of, one of my friends fell in. Sorry. And my friends also fe felt the same. They used to ask me, bro, if I fail, fall inside, will you come and save me? And all those kinds of stuff. So that's how, for me, it was. Did you imagine as if one of your friends fell, not fell in? And uh, uh, were you scared? Like, I was not scared, but I was uh, very, uh, uh, very, I don't know, I was not scared, but I, uh, I wanted people to get scared. Yeah, because uh, the music did give the effects, the uh, you know, fear. At the same time, the sound effects and the silence was more scary. Whenever there's no music, there's only sound effects, and one, whenever there's only that eerie silence. It's a talk they use in most of the horror movies. There's a silence before the bang. <laughs> so you use that also. This one was, you know, it was uh, more like very real, because inside we don't hear anything, yeah. except the silence. Inside, um, uh, the sound is also like, it's not very legible. I wanted it that way. And a lot of people in the dialogue here, you know, you shouldn't hear the dialogue. It is in the space like that, you won't hear it clearly. So that all adds to the fear factor. Right. So, uh, like, um, I approached as a survival horror. So, I don't know if I do Let's go and find out with the protagonist. Let's go inside and see. Right. Could be anything. And maybe the devil hit when they came. <laughs> also, how was it a challenge? Because they, uh, I watched an interview, they said that like before you, there were many filmmakers who approached it and they kind of dropped it. So what was going in your mind after you heard that? I was not like sure I would be able to make this movie until I saw the set. Even the... Actual money mail boys came in and they said they yeah, yeah, yeah. got he, he had a small panic uh, attack like when he came into the set. Of course, you have the gooey mud and all those th things on the rock. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like, how did he imagine that too? Like, the rocks are going sharp and, and all. And like the inside. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, the Putin told me, the guy who went, uh, Subhash doesn't remember anything. Okay. Putin was also like full on under that only to say, so he didn't also like notice the space, uh, like he was just move past them and bring it up. But he said it's not a straight place, you have to go down like, like this. So then we made a 3D, uh, virtually we made a uh, pit like that. Then we, I, I said to like, uh, we put a, an anatomical body in it. Then we understudy it, like how a body behaves and falls. Then we put virtual cameras, we, that's how we achieve the fall. How is the... Uh, 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 what do you call? How long was Subhash stuck inside? First stuck for four or five hours. That's all. That's all. That's all. So by then the so fire force came. Spirit, he uh, falls around noon, twelve hmm. noon, as I'm showing all the like lunch time. Hmm. Then he saved like around like sunset. So it's a, like so it's a very small thing. So that Period. was a big challenge. So I had to make it big at the time, and all the obstacles has to come. Then the drama. So that was. So the you, you elongated time. I elongated time. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. But also I skipped a lot of time also in between. Yeah. So because there's one reference that the rain water saved him or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the end of the world. Because if, if it uh, didn't rain, there would be oxygen down there. Oh. Because there was water movement, there is oxygen. Oh. Otherwise he would have like died. He wouldn't would be able to go down also. He would also hmm. faint. Oh, the carbon monoxide. Yeah, whatever. yeah. And nobody like, uh, and there is a lot of methane gas. Yeah. So if you light a cigarette and all, there will be like a... Fire. Yeah, fire. So maybe one <laughs> British guy came and lit a cigarette and we blasted him and called it Devil's Kitchen or something. Oh. <laughs> also, uh, I, I see when Kutaran like goes and saves Subhash, in the film, there's a scene like he grabs him by the neck. Did it happen in real too? It didn't uh, happen. We, what happened down there, like, they both don't even remember. Like, it was, so, Subhash was like out, and Putin was like full on, like, in this like, high adrenaline context. So he doesn't know, he just wanted to be. So, why I put that was like, of course, a horror movie trope. And it was his primary instinct of survival. He doesn't know where he is, he doesn't remember who he is, he doesn't remember his trip to Bolivia and his extreme, extreme pain, and it's dark. You will see a very light, and of course, that will be the first difference to me. What is uh, the one element that uh, you think 
which was well received, I mean, uh, which made the film well received by Tamil people, I mean, Tamil industry. Of course, that is the, I think, the company song. Uh, I put it in the beginning. Okay. So the Tamil audience, okay, this is something familiar. So they, mm -hmm. I think they, it, it helps them to ease into like, rather than you're watching a Malayalam film, this is most of them, it's very hard to understand what Tamil people are. So the Torakatale Kanmani and Bodh Gargo, the Tamil people like it's okay, it's not something it's familiar territory. Let's watch this movie. Of course, Raja Factor comes out. So the Kamsar is not visible, but Raja Factor is like visible and audible. I had one more uh, question on the character arc of Abhilash. Uh, for me, he was very interesting. He seemed like the most fierce uh, person in the beginning of the movie because he's the first person to kick the opponent yeah. team through with his legs. But then once the event starts, he goes into this hole and he's sitting there, he goes out and he's sitting like Eli Devam. Uh, but then when the moment comes, he comes back in and you show him like a godly figure because he is standing on top of everybody. So how did you decide on that um, character arc for See, Abhilash? Really also when soon after uh, he fell down, Abhilash reacted the same way. And they took him and like put him under the tree. It asked him to wait, uh, wait, wait there. But uh, in the climax when he comes out, that was written by, like that was a cinematic thing for to bring him down. So you're thinking like, damn, oh, we left one guy up there, what we should be doing? <laughs> then you're like, oh, we have to bring him down, bring him down now. And then you say, why should we bring him down now? Then we made that true Sadikara thing. Mm. So, yeah, so, and uh, Abhilash is a very sensitive guy. And uh, in their gang, he's the most unpredictable. And when a fight breaks out, before punching the other guy, they will check where is Abhilash <laughs> and take him away. Then they will start a fight. So Abhilash is that kind of a very unpredictable anger, very sensitive and he speaks very less. And after watching the movie, he just came to me, just held my hand for like one minute, then he left. Yeah, yeah, he was very he was a very sensitive person. So he couldn't like, uh, it was very, uh, too much for him. So like, he didn't uh, see these boys for like two, three months. He didn't get out also. Yeah. So I think um, there are a couple of things uh, which have emerged out of this conversation that stories can come completely from your imagination. As he said, and he didn't know where the characters in Jani Man rose. And here is a story which actually happened. But even if you say that there is a story that happened and you make a documentary, you still need to write it because you need to have these character arcs and you need to have the tropes and you need to write in the climax, you have dilated time. So, a lot of learning out of this particular thing that uh, do not think that if you have an interesting story and if you just film it the way it was, it's going to probably have this kind of reception. Uh, then there's the whole element of execution that you need to be relentless and um, you know fearless about finding new ways of executing it. And more importantly, it is to um, come out just as Subhash uh, did from the cave to tell the story. He's come out here to share his experience with Swirtas and show us the light. And thank you so much, thank Chids, you, for coming thank in. You, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <sir. laughs>